Hello, in this video we're talking about time lapses again because I have figured out a very clever way to shoot the holy grail time lapse, which is again sunrise or sunset time lapse, in a way that is way, way, way more convenient than doing it the traditional way. And I cannot wait to share this tip with you, so let's get started. Alright, so traditionally if you shoot a holy grail time lapse, like I said, sunset or sunrise, what you need to do is literally you need to sit behind the camera for an hour, two hours, maybe even three hours and adjust the camera settings as the light changes dramatically in your scene. Because again, if it's a sunset, you start with a very bright scene, especially if you like shoot towards the sun. And then as the sun goes down, the light is being reduced and reduced and you need to bump up your shutter speed, you need to make your shutter speed longer and longer, then at a certain point you need to also bump up your ISO in order to compensate for losing light and I typically recommend using a fixed single value of the aperture throughout the entire time lapse because if you change the aperture it's going to affect your vignetting, it's going to affect your depth of field, it's going to affect your sharpness of the image possibly. So I would recommend to just stay with the same aperture and just wiggle around with the shutter speed and the ISO. And by the way, I have a whole separate video when I explain the entire process of shooting a holy grail time lapse manually with editing with the entire workflow. I will put a reference to this video by the end of this video on the end screen, so make sure to stick around till the end. And generally the most problematic thing with shooting a time lapse like this is that you need to sit behind the camera and change the camera settings every other few minutes. And this is very exhausting, this is very boring, very tiring, and it pretty much makes the entire process very much not enjoyable. Especially if you do it in like cold conditions or something like this, it can be very exhausting. The most I could put up with shooting a time lapse like this would be like one hour, one and a half, one hour and 40 minutes and something like this. You may be able to put up longer period of time, but again, it's very exhausting and it's not fun at all. And you need to do it manually because if you use an automatic mode, usually there are a few problems with the automatic mode. First of all, the camera may try to expose for the wrong portion of the of your frame. For instance, if you have something in the foreground, maybe some trees that you don't really need to expose for the trees, you are fine with having those trees silhouetted because you want to expose for the sky. And the camera in the default metering mode in automatic mode will try to sort of find a good balance in exposure to expose both the foreground and the background and it will have no problem blowing the highlights in the background if it thinks that this is the optimal way to do it. But this is obviously not what you want to do. If you shoot a sunset or sunrise, what you need to do is retain the maximum amount of available detail in the sky because this is, this is the subject of the time lapse itself, so you don't want to blow any highlights. And this is problem number one. And problem number two is that if you have a fixed interval between your shots, for instance, I usually use seven seconds between my individual shots, what happens if the shutter speed suddenly became longer than seven seconds? For instance, if the camera decided that the scene is very dark and it needs to prolong the shutter speed even more to like 10 seconds, what would happen? You would take one shot and the camera will continue to collect light for 10 seconds and after seven seconds your intervalometer will try to shoot another frame but the camera is still shooting the previous frame so it would result in skipping frames. You would basically skip every other frame and this will effectively ruin your time lapse. So how can you deal with all that and still use some kind of an automatic mode so you don't have to sit behind the camera changing the settings every other few minutes? Well, let me explain it to you. All right, so first off, remember to always use manual focus if you shoot a time lapse like this, because if the scene changes, your camera may have a problem finding the right focus, especially if your focus point is like in the sky and the clouds are moving and it's suddenly very clear or something like this. So make sure to focus manually and use the same exact focus throughout the entirety of the time lapse. Then what you can do in order to prevent the camera from exposing to the foreground, you can actually change from evaluative metering, which is the default metering, to spot metering. And it's spot metering, basically the camera, instead of taking the entire frame and evaluating which might be the best exposure overall, it will literally meter just a small spot in the center of the frame and use that as a reference point to calculate the optimal camera settings. So if you frame your shot in a way that the spot in the center is actually outlined in a circle, at least on Canon cameras, so if you are framing, you know exactly which spot will be taken into consideration with spot metering. So you can frame your shot in a way that this spot lies in the sky so that the camera will always expose for the sky. And this will of course limit the ability to frame your shot. But if you want to frame it differently, what I would recommend you to do is just take a wider lens 
frame it like this so that the spot is in the sky and then in post-production you can actually reframe your shot and crop out the top left and right portion so that the framing is sort of more down towards the horizon or the maybe things that are interesting happening on the ground and keep in mind that if you are shooting a time lapse like this in a way that you are taking individual row photographs and then stacking them together in order to create a time lapse Usually, pretty much any camera would be able to produce a much higher resolution of the output time lapse than it would if it was just shooting a video. So, for instance, in case of the Canon EOS R that I'm shooting on right now, the video capabilities of this camera is either 1080p or 4K, but in photo mode, I can actually produce a little bit over 6K of resolution doing a time lapse by taking individual photos. So, from 6K, I can crop in into 4K, and if I crop in into 1080p, I have a lot of flexibility with cropping. So you can just, again, use a wider lens and crop in in post-production, which is not a problem. And you will probably not lose resolution that way. The next thing you can do is set your camera not to full automatic mode, but to a semi-automatic mode with aperture priority. This will make sure that you can set the aperture that you want and the camera will use this exact value of the aperture throughout the entire time lapse. I would generally recommend to stop down the lens from the maximum aperture one step down. So for instance, from 2.8, I would stop it down to f4 because usually it's like, a, it's like a very vague rule of thumb kind of thing, but usually most lenses will perform the best when they are stopped down one stop from the brightest aperture. The vignetting will get reduced if you stop it down one stop and the overall performance, the optical performance of the lens should be optimal. And then in that mode, the camera will manipulate shutter speed and it will manipulate the ISO. And let's take a look at an example of a sunset, for instance. So if you're shooting a sunset, you will start with ISO 100 and a pretty high, pretty fast shutter speed. And then as the sun goes down, as you are losing light, the camera will prolong and prolong and prolong the shutter speed. And then at some point it should start bumping the ISO, like I said. And let's take a look at the ISO first. So what you want to do is you want to somehow limit the maximum ISO that your camera can use. And this setting is pretty much available, I think, on most cameras, even consumer level cameras. So all you have to do is just, you need to go to the shooting settings of the camera, find the appropriate setting with the auto ISO and limit the maximum ISO that the camera can choose. For instance, to so 1600, 3200, maybe 6400 or something like this. So you can avoid the camera from setting a very, very high ISO, like 12,000 or something like this, which would result in a grainy image. And this is not what you want. So just use that in order to limit your ISO. I would recommend limiting it to like 1600, 3200 or something like this. The example that I will show you in just a second, I limited it to 6400. So you can just use that as well. And then the more problematic part is the shutter speed, because on my previous camera, which was the Canon 77D, there was no way to limit the shutter speed. And I didn't even think that it is possible until I recently saw a post on Facebook, because I'm actually a member of a few Facebook groups regarding the Canon EOS R. And somebody posted a screenshot and was asking very confused why his EOS R can only shoot with a shutter speed as long as one second. And somebody replied that it is actually possible to customize your EOS R in a way to reduce the range of usable shutter speeds and also the range of usable apertures, by the way, to a predefined range. So this guy had his camera limited to only one second of shutter speed. And I immediately thought to myself, wait a minute, I can use that to limit my camera from using too long shutter speeds. For instance, for a time lapse like this, I could limit my camera to avoid using shutter speeds longer than like half a second or something like this. And that way I would ensure that my camera will not be taking longer shutter speeds that would result in skipped frames. And I also can control the motion blur because if you are using a very, very slow shutter speed and something in your shot is moving like people, cars, I don't know, boats or something like this in case of a seascape, you may want to control the motion blur so that the motion blur doesn't get ridiculously large. So you can use that feature and in order to access that, at least on the EOS R, you have to go to the orange menu, which is the camera customizability. And again, you need to find an appropriate option to limit the usable range of shutter speeds. And then you can limit that to, to let's say a half a second, like I said before. And that is pretty much all you have to do. You can use the exposure compensation function on your camera to sort of offset the overall exposure, maybe a third stop, maybe two thirds of a stop down. And this is usually what I do just to be extra safe that I'm not blowing any highlights. So what I usually would recommend to do is just maybe dial it down to like minus one third of a stop or something like this. And the best thing about this entire technique is that if you are using an external intervalometer, and if you don't, I can highly recommend 
the Pixel DC252. I have a separate video about this remote. This is an excellent value for money. I will link it up here if you want to check it out. If you are using an external intervalometer, at any point in the process, you can just interrupt it in a way that you don't ruin your entire time lapse. You can just wait for a shot to be taken and then in between the next shot, you can flip it to manual, you can uh, further tweak in the exposure compensation if you see that the camera starts to do something weird, which you don't want to do with your exposure. So there is really no risk in like ruining the entire time lapse. You can just use the semi-automatic mode with those tips that I have just share it with you and at any point if you see that the camera kind of misbehaves you can take over the control flip it to manual and continue the time lapse just make sure that you don't move the camera on the tripod because then uh, the time lapse will be ruined so just be extra safe and let me actually show you an example because i have shot uh, this way using this exact technique a sunset from my balcony just yesterday and i was able to pull off a two and a half hours of time lapse which i would never be able to withstand sitting behind the camera changing settings every few minutes and in that time where my camera was left alone on the balcony doing it all by itself i could actually chill in the kitchen i grabbed a beer i even made some homemade pizza so i definitely put a good use to the time that i would normally have to spend behind the camera and i'm sorry if i just made you hungry I had to i can share the recipe for the pizza if you want just hit me up in the comments down below but let's actually now take a look in lr time lapse where i have the time lapse loaded in to see how my camera was changing the camera settings because i think it did a fantastic job so let's take a look all right so right here we are in lr time lapse and as you can see this is my time lapse right here i can just scrub it in a little bit if you want to see it but i will show you the final result in just a second but as you can see if we take a look at the shutter speeds and iso as you can see, it is 1 over 3200, then a little bit down, it is 1 over 2500, ISO is still 100, and then as I scroll down, the shutter speed gets longer and longer, Six, 1 over 1600, 1 over 1000, 1 over 800, longer, 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 and then at some point, it will reach the half a second, and right here, as you can see, it is half a second and ISO 100. And at this point, it actually couldn't prolong the shutter speed any longer because it would get out of the range that I have predefined. So it starts bumping up the ISO. So you can see 125, 160. It is still keeping 0.5.4 seconds of the shutter speed. And it bumps up the ISO. It bumps it up to 200, 250, 320, 400. Shutter speed is still sort of the same, either 0.5 or 0.4 seconds. And then we have 1,000, 2,000, 4,000, and it stops at 64,000, which is the limit that I have imposed on the camera. So now let's take a look at the final time-lapse captured this way. So as you can see, the result is pretty good, isn't it? And I didn't have to do a single thing. I didn't have to adjust the exposure compensation, anything throughout the entire process. My camera did all the calculations and did all the decision-making when it comes to shutter speed and ISO with the pre-imposed uh, ranges of usable ISO and shutter speed that I have set beforehand, I made sure that I would get an appropriate result. So I can highly recommend that you at least check out this method, try it out. Like I said, if you use an external intervalometer at any point, maybe you can check in on your camera and like every other 30 minutes or something like this. And if you see something wrong with the exposure, you can flip it to manual and continue the time-lapse this way. But of course, be safe if you're leaving the camera behind somewhere, make sure that it is safe and that nothing happens to the camera. Nobody steals it it doesn't rain on it the wind doesn't tip over your tripod or something like this like make extra precautions with that definitely and like i said i don't know if the limiting of shutter speeds is available on every camera i'm pretty sure it wasn't available on my canon 770d it is definitely available on the eos star so if you actually want to pick up an eos star which i can 200 percent recommend or maybe you can pick up the remote or maybe any of the gear that i use basically check out the description of this video where i have a bunch of links to all the stuff that I'm using and all the stuff that I'm recommending, those links are to Amazon and they are affiliated. So if you want to support the channel, definitely check out one of my links. But that's it basically for now. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to leave it a thumbs up down below. I would really appreciate that. Also consider subscribing to the channel because I have a ton of videos already when it comes to tips with photography, filmmaking, drones, basically everything you can do with your camera, post-processing tutorials, shooting tutorials, all that stuff. So definitely check out my channel and subscribe. 
for future videos. And right now, if you want to see the entire workflow and how to actually post-process your time lapses, definitely check out this video when you can see the breakdown of the entire process. But that's it for now. Have a good day and bye-bye.